Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How are we all doing today? Hope we all had a safe and productive week and we're enjoying installing those Renai tankless heaters. All right, today's video is probably the most important video that I could put out there. Now, I've been mentioning this, I've had a few videos, past videos on it, and this is venting. Now, I've been trying to grab every single piece, but because of the pandemic and because of uh, parts being shipped from Europe and Japan to here, it's been slow. So what I did was I collected enough pieces so that I can go over and show you exactly what not to use and what to use. Okay, so follow along. This is an extremely important video if you're installing, whether it's an V series, an RL series, or the RU or RUR Sensei series. Okay? All right. So, a lot of my questions are, you know, what venting do I need for a specific model? And what do I need to do? I have a water heater that's there. Now, if you have an electric heater, there is no vent. It's just hot, cold, an electrical line, and that's it, and a tank. So basically, you have to put your own vent in. But the first thing we're gonna go over is, if you have some type of gas-fired heater, whether it be propane or natural gas, sitting in your garage, in your utility room, in a closet, in your attic, wherever, you're gonna have some type of vent that's been venting that unit. Now, you most likely are going to have a thing called B-Vent. B-Vent is double wall flue pipe. Now this is four inch. So it's a four inch inside. Then there is an air space between it with an outer shell. And as you can see, this is movable. This is an elbow. You can make it into a straight piece, a 45, a 90, whatever. But a straight piece, or this elbow piece, they don't make 45s because you can make a 45 out of it, is going to look like this. It's going to be a pipe within a pipe. Now, you're looking at the Renai and saying, hey, the Renai is a pipe within a pipe, but it is not the correct pipe. So you're going to find this most likely coming through flammable material. So through the roof flashing, through your attic, through the drywall, down, just past the drywall, then you might have some type of regular flue pipe that goes through the roof. Now, on some propane fired heaters, you're allowed to put heavy flexible, like what you would find behind a dryer, that goes down into the diverter, which is the thing on top of the water heater that brings air in, it's got four legs, it brings air in, mixes up with the carbon monoxide and helps push the carbon monoxide up through the chimney. So you might find this coming through, so this V-vent is coming through your roof, then you have flue pipe that's going down. Sometimes they bring the V-vent all the way down to the top of the water heater, which is the, that diverter. Looks like a little cap. So on the top of your tankless, whether it's um, a V, an RL, or an RU, RUR series Sensei, you're going to find a collar like this, which is a concentric collar. And on the RU and RUR series, you're gonna find this adapter, which is a five by two adapter pushed into the top. Then to the left, so facing the tankless to the left, now this is on the condensing, the RU and the RUR. To the left, you're gonna find a cap with a little stainless steel screw in the center that is for the fresh air. So, every people have been thinking that they can take this B-vent and put it to the top of the unit. So, something like this, or something like this. That is not to be done. You cannot use this metal pipe, whether it's this pipe or this pipe, to go into the top of the unit. 
as you can see, it is not meant for it. It is meant for the Rolex U-Bink venting. So as you can see, it'll fit. And I've seen people put tape around it, put sealer in it. No, it cannot be used. So regular flu pipe or B-Vent cannot be used to go into the top of any Renai tankless heater. V, RL, or RU, or RU, R series. So, you're gonna remove this vent and you're gonna discard it. Now, on, if you're going to go through your roof, we'll go through that first. So let's get these things out of the way. Now, say you wanna go through your roof. You wanna use the existing roof flashing. What you're gonna need, now, what I'm going to show you is going to be the same type of application for both the VRL and RUR. The difference is going to be what's in the inside. And I've mentioned this numerous times that the boxes are marked for condensing unit only. So, if you're going to go through the roof, this is the vertical termination kit short they make a longer one so basically this is for condensing so it has the gray plastic inside and then the white polymer outside opposed to the silver inside and the white polymer so for those those units this is for condensing and basically it's going to fit right into the top of the unit now this one is um, what they call the four by two so it's the smaller style vent but this is vertical vent your fresh air gets sucked in through here and your carbon monoxide gets expelled through here as you can see it's movable this is your storm collar here or your the your, your like your it's a storm collar basically and this is what will either fit over Renai's boot or when you alter the roof flashing that was from the B vent that goes through your roof and go back I have a video on that on how to make a template how to cut it and how to slip this through the roof and then the flashing from the B vent will slide right into here, a little stainless steel screw here, here, and here, in one-third places, into it, put some roof cement around this, and as I say, Bob's your uncle. So, on all vertical vent, you're going to get this vertical vent, you're going to get a clamp. So basically, this thing will go around, it, it's, it's, got, it's like a ratcheting cinch clamp, and then this moves in different positions so that you can screw this to either your roof rafter, a truss, or some wood that you build out that will then hold this nice and steady. You're going to get an instruction manual that shows all of the venting and on the condensing model only so this is the one with the plastic inside you're going to get this packet of lube now what you're going to do so let me get this back in the box and grab here is an elbow for condensing you're going to take just a little bit of this lube now this packet is enough to do a quite a bit of piping. You're going to put a little bit of this lube on this seal and this seal. You don't have to butter it like you're buttering toast, just a little bit. It helps to push the plastics in. You're not going to get this on the vertical vent for non-condensing that has the metal inside. That goes in pretty easy, but the plastic and the friction 
causes um, that a lot of heat and this lube helps push it in once it's in even with the lube it is the dickens to try to get out so you have to be pretty accurate with your measurements when you cut it to assemble it so that's what's going to come inside of the vertical vent <clears throat> you're also going to get that lube inside of the horizontal vent kit which we're going to get to in a minute now let me show you this box this box just dropped it ah. this box see what it says for condensing appliances only so this here and as you can see it says condensing roof discharge terminal short for condensing appliances only that is the piping that you are going to use for your ru and your rur series so this is a 19 and a half inch piece see what it says and this is your pipe 19 and a half inches and every box no matter whether it's for condensing appliances or non condensing appliances you're going to get your little bag of quarter by half inch screws that you're going to put in this position right here right above this lip and what it does is it when you push these in they screw the white pieces together to prevent them from pulling apart so every single box gets this bag of three screws now if we go now and look at this is a 10 inch piece notice this box says nothing just 10 inch piece why because it's for dun, dun, dun. and again little bag of screws this is for the V and the RL series metal inside same white polymer outside but the metal inside so for condensing condensing condensates condensates caustic when it goes through this metal it'll tear up this metal where that plastic is designed for caustic condensate so your piping is going to be 10 19.5 and 39 that's your pipe then you can get boxes of single elbows now this happens to be the horizontal vent kit let me just make some room here this is the horizontal vent kit now this is short they make 11.5 and 21 but this happens to be the 8 this is your shorty and this is for plastic inside condensing you're going to get this termination all right you're going to get one elbow you're going to get of course a packet of three screws and then you're going to get a black thimble and a white thimble black thimble pushed on to go outside and the white thimble is for the inside then your elbow that gets pushed in this way every horizontal vent and I'll show you the three to five on the unit on the tells you what the top is so when you're inside the house and you're putting this together as you can see the silver sticker says top so it tells you which way the top is so you want that to be facing just like this when it's outside just like that so but I'll go over this in a second why this is a, sm a smaller one so now on your 
horizontal vent, you're going to, a spe on a regular V and RL series interior, you're just going to have this collar. On your RU and your RUR, you're going to have this on. If you're going to use concentric venting, you're going to remove this and discard it. Always good to keep one. And then your concentric venting will slip right over the collar. Then you put your piece in through the wall with your two thimbles, and now you're vented. Or, in the case of the horizontal vent, if it's a straight run, you might have to run some pipe up to that piece and then through the roof. On these two, the black. The black with this thimble is the only thing to be sticking outside the house. If you happen to have a little bit of white sticking out, so when you, when you measure to cut it, and again, go back in a past video, I go through a complete cutting of one of these uh, venting. No matter if it's the condensing or non-condensing, it's all cut exactly the same, and we're gonna go through that in a second. So black is the only thing to be sticking out of the wall or the roof. Well, there's no thimble with this. Remember, the flashing, whether it's a, like a new house or you buy the Renai roof boot and you put it and re-roof it and then push this through, this goes up into there. Into, so the flashing goes up into this. This is the storm collar. This black and that black with the thimble are the only things to be sticking out. If for some reason you have a half inch or something, your measurement was off, you have to paint it. But when you take your measurement and you assemble this, try your best to only have black. Now, if you go onto my Instagram channel, and I'll, have, I'll put that in the description below, I just photographed a job we did yesterday and exactly how the vent is supposed to look. And that is horizontal going through the wall. So now, on this unit, this is the two by five. It is a small, and it's the short version. Again, it's got the top. It's gonna to come with screws. It's gonna come with um, uh, a thing of lube. This, and this is used for a RU, RUR. This will fit over the collar. Again, your fresh air is stays plugged. And then this goes through the wall. It's a small vent that will go through the wall. It's just another option for you to vent this. Now, if you don't want to vent with, let me grab a piece of pipe. If you do not want to vent or you can vent with the PVC, you're going to leave this collar on. You're going to remove the cap that's on the left side. Remember, we're fit. you people there are the tankless, so I'm facing you. So to the left of this, this is dead center, you're gonna have a cap with a screw. You're gonna take that off. You can vent it with two inch schedule 40 PVC red letter, not foam core. So this fits right into there like that. And then you could put an elbow and go right out the wall or go 45 up through the roof. And then your air intake. Also, if you're gonna say go up and out, this, if it's a large garage, you can use room air. If not, you go out the wall. These two have to be 12, but I like them 14 inches apart, 45 with the screens in them. You can go back into my RUR series unit uh, video, the seven part series, and see that I actually have a wall that I show it. So, if you're gonna do it with PVC, schedule 40 pressure, not foam core. You can use the sewer fittings, because those are um, schedule 40. 
there's no foam core in them. It's the pipe that has a foam core. Basically, it's got a foam core. And the condensate will tear up the PVC. So pressure, red letter. Now, Home Depot sells pressure that's black letter. You just gotta read it. It has to say Schedule 40 on it. All right, now, what else do they make? They make 45s, and you get them two to a box. So an elbow, if you have to buy elbows, they're gonna come one in a box. Remember, you're going to get an elbow with whatever horizontal vent, the eight, the 11.5, or the 21. You're gonna get an elbow. But if you need to buy additional elbows, you're gonna get one to a box. In the 45s, you get two to a box. And what else do you get? Your little bag of screws. So, to look at the elbows. This is an elbow with the metal inside. Here's your elbow with the plastic inside. They look exactly identical, but for non-condensing, for condensing. All right, two to a box. And we'll bring the box over. Let me just put them back in the right box. Okay, this is the 45. Let me get the boxes over here. So again, 45 for condensing units only. And here is the box. 45 degree bends quantity two. Does not say for condensing. Now, cutting these, what do you need to do? We're going to remove the two unit, the pieces. All right. Look at the end here. What do you see? You see more of the silver sticking out than the white. And you have exactly one half of an inch of the silver sticking out. That's for engagement. So, and again, this is for the silver non-condensing and the plastic condensing it is the same just the inside is different cutting it and prepping it is the same way so you see here when this pipe is going into this pipe it engages first you see you could still see some of a space there so when i push this in and i can't push it in because i'll never get it out this pipe has to go in further into this center than this pipe only goes into about three quarters of the way down here. That's why you're putting those screws here and not over here, not over here, right here. So what happens, <clears throat> and here is a perfect example of somebody cutting this and then installing it. You see here? I, this, is a, this is my demo piece. They cut it with a sawzall and they just cut it straight, straight down. So this is right flush with the white. Now, what happens? The inner is where the carbon monoxide goes out. Now, think of it this way. On a V and an RL series, it's 86% efficient. So, the 86 to 100 is the difference in what is expelled through the um, uh, center for the carbon monoxide. The um, condensing is 97% efficient. So, it's got a lower carbon monoxide rate going through, lower heat, and that's why you could use the PVC and it has plastic. So, what happens is the outer shell here, this outer shell, is where the fresh air gets sucked in. That's why it's called concentric piping, pipe within a pipe. The air gets sucked in through the outer shell. 
gets drawn in through the fan, goes up into the burner, mixes with the fuel, makes combustion. Same thing with a car, whether it's a diesel or a gasoline, same thing. You have uh, air, fuel, spark, boom. Again, what do I say? Bob's your uncle. Now, when you have no separation between the inner core and the outer core, the fan sucks in the carbon monoxide to create combustion, which is already a byproduct of combustion and really makes the Renai or any tankless sound and dance horribly. So that's why it is very important to, now I made a mark here. So when you take your measurement, you make your mark, you put a wrap around. Again, go into my past video and you will see how to cut it. You put a wrap around, tape it, mark it with your, magic, your marker, and then you're just gonna go around spinning this and cut it so the white falls away, leaving the silver exposed. Then you're gonna measure from the white half inch out on the silver, you're gonna mark it, and then you're gonna cut it. Now, of course, you're gonna need a reciprocating saw or a very good fine hacksaw to do the metal, and of course, you could do it with a hacksaw or a reciprocating saw for the plastic. But then once you cut it, now you're half inch longer, now you have to bevel it, you have to clean it, and then you have to blow it out because you don't want none of those filings left in this pipe that get sucked back into the fan, okay? So, that's why I keep this thing. I don't use it. This is my demo piece, what not to do. You need to be a half inch out for this to engage. You see, the, the inner is engaged already, but you still see there's light, there's a space. And then once you push this in, that's what makes the seal between the inner and the outer core. All right. So, to go back a second, if you have this, if you have this, they do not go down to vent the tankless. If it's in a garage, it mo it'll work. You'll get the unit because what's going to happen is this is going to fit over that but still leave space for air to get sucked in. So it's going to work. And I've had people that the, that sent me that messaged me and then sent me photos and said, "But this thing has been working for two years." Yeah, it's in your garage. It has air, but the carbon monoxide has been going out. This condensate's been coming back. It hasn't been balanced correctly, and it has torn up the unit. And that's why you're now getting a code 11, a code 12, or a code 11 and a 12 because the entire heat exchanger and burner are just rotted away. So. If you have this, if you have this, or if you have some type of a flexible connector going from the ceiling down to the water heater, it cannot be used. Take it apart, tape up the piece going through the roof. If you're on an outside wall, use the horizontal vent. Or if you're going to take it all out and go through the roof, whether it's be with the uh, vertical vent or with the... Um, uh, PVC, that's what's used. So again, not to be used. This one or this one. It is U-bank venting and it is for condensing units only if you have an RU and an RUR series and then just the non-mark box that ha and it's the pipe with the metal inside, that's for uh, non-condensing. Now, some of the boxes were at one time marked for non-condensing. So you might get a supply house that still has an old stock. So if the box says for non-condensing, you're right. But if it says for condensing and you have a V or an RL series, you're wrong. All right? 
I hope this answers a lot of questions because, like I said, this is the this is the most asked question that I get, or the most bad install that I see when they send me pictures, and this will will destroy your unit. You you run a, the, uh, an undersized gas pipe. You put your gas regulator too close. The unit's got safeties in it. It'll lock out. But like I said, I've had people that had these things installed for two years, and finally they burned out. Thousand dollar, eighteen hundred dollar unit. You know, between a thousand and eighteen hundred dollars, they're thrown in the garbage. And if they're installed correctly, serviced, they'll last you twenty years. Okay. All right, YouTube, I'd like to thank everybody for all of those questions, those comments, those comments back after I've been helping you. Um, all of the likes, all the subscribes, hit the little ding, the little bell, and um, it'll, you'll be notified when my videos come out, which pretty much is every Saturday. So I'll have my Instagram below. Take a look at exactly how the horizontal vent through the wall is supposed to look. And we just did it yesterday. And it was a perfect picture because there was no bushes, no nothing around it. It was a perfect picture to take to show. Okay, YouTube? You all be safe out there. Enjoy your endless hot water. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.